Hello, my name is Luis Roque with HIS Capital Group, and today we're going to break down our quarterly economic update in order to help you understand what is going on and how it affects our industry, uh, the real estate industry, and also the lending industry. Uh, the main part uh, that we're going to be focusing on is uh, going to be the housing market, and that's going to be our emphasis. And uh, primarily, we're going to be talking about what's going on with the new construction, uh, why house prices are climbing, what's going on in the rental market with investments and also with the mortgage industry. So we will look at the overall picture and also some of the examples of other markets and how they're reacting to the demand for housing. So this is the breakdown of the different topics we're going to talk about as you guys know we release a quarterly economic update and this quarterly economic update um, includes a variety of topics so we're not going to be covering every single topic of the um, the economic uh, report but instead we're going to be focusing only in the housing uh, market today um, as i said this is the third quarter release for 2017 and uh, some of the different topics that we often cover in the release or in this um, update uh, are listed right here as you guys can see and and it's part of the magazine part of the the, the report that we produce every quarter and uh, so reports on the Fed and how the Federal Reserve um, and their policies affect our industry What's going, what's going on with the job and wages market, how Mr. Trump's policies may have a positive or negative impact in our industry, what's going on with labor and employment, what's going on with GDP and inflation, and also what's going on with the average American consumer, right? So all those things are very important in order to understand a macronomic picture of the economy, but we are trying to bring it down to a micro level in the real estate industry. So uh, as you guys have probably seen before, we like to study the market cycles. We've studied the past 100 years, uh, 150 years now I would say, in the market cycles and what has happened in the real estate cycle in particularly. So as it says here in the special note, the cycle does not tell you when to buy. It merely tells you how to buy within each stage. So we have studied the cycles. We like studying the cycles in order to know where we are. And right now, a lot of good things are happening that allows us to predict where we are in the cycle. And based on what we're going to be talking about, we're going to show you how we are somewhere right here, somewhere in the middle of absorption and growth. And we have seen a full cycle in the past 12 years, since 2006, uh, where we were uh, in the growth stage, reaching the peak. We actually reached the peak in 2007, uh, to the late 2007, early 2008, and that's when interest rates um, continue to increase. Uh, at the time, there was a lot of construction. Population growth was not keeping up with construction. So there was a saturation of inventory. And that's when we noticed that a lot of properties uh, started hitting the market. There were a lot of defaults in mortgages, a lot of foreclosures, a lot of short sales, and all of that, which took time. It took time to get to the bottom. Uh, it took about four years, um, created the real bottom, which actually happened all the way in 2012. So in comparison to the dark days of the stock market, which were in 2008, they happened overnight. The stock market can go from a, a zero to 60 in a blink of an eye. So you can lose it all from one day to another. And that happened to a lot of um, municipalities, a lot of hedge funds, a lot of pension funds. Uh, and these pension funds and municipalities that had all the capital, 401ks, uh, they had all their capital allocated to mortgage-backed securities. The mortgage securities that were uh, um, 
uh, the collateral for these uh, sophisticated instruments, which were like stocks that were collateralized by, by mortgages, um, they started going bad. And when that happened, in the stock market, the impact was significant and it was overnight. In the real estate market, it took a couple of years. It really took from 2008 to 2012 to really see the bottom of the market. And so that's a good thing in real estate. I mean, it does not happen overnight. And uh, the good thing is at the end of the day, if you can hold on, you could have an asset, right? Hopefully it's not devaluated too much. But what we've seen in the past couple of years is that a lot of that negative equity has gone away. People that were able to hold on into their houses, they have equity now. So where we are right now, which is somewhere between absorption and growth, we've seen the beginning of the growth stages. And where we are right now is going to continue to climb. And the reason is because uh, deregulation promotes speculation and advances asset price acceleration. What So what this is really saying is that the deregulation of industries promote the speculators or investors to come in and drop more money and invest and what that does it actually absorbs all the supply and creates demand so prices go up so whenever you deregulate an industry um, it usually becomes more competitive if you deregulate an industry usually um, it becomes more affordable for everybody to participate and it increases the, the demand because everybody is taking the limited supply. And right now we see that in the real estate industry for the past couple of years, we have a limited supply of inventory. So just to recap on the regulation, uh, President Trump has made several comments regarding how he wants to deregulate the Dodd-Frank Act. And the Dodd-Frank Act is the one that in 2008, these two senators uh, put the brakes on the lending industry and started becoming the police. They created the CFPB, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And uh, also Donald Trump with the Financial Choice Act uh, has threatened to say, hey, I can change the leadership of the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and ultimately I can put the brakes on them if they don't do, uh, the, they don't treat the economy and the industry in general how uh, I, I believe it should be treated. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a catch twenty two. I mean, you do not want government inter intervention in in when it comes to the econ the economy, but at the same time you need some intervention and protection in order for the markets to operate safely. And we've seen that regulation has put brakes on the industry. And then when deregulation happens, we see a lot of price acceleration or asset price acceleration. For example, you can see it right now in healthcare. Uh, healthcare is being over-regulated. And in, in the past, since Obama promoted the Healthcare Act or the Obama Care, as they call it, um, the price for health insurance has actually gone up because it's over-regulated. And what Trump and, and others have actually said lately is that if we get rid of this over-regulation, it will make it more competitive because it will bring in the speculators and then it drops the, drops the price. Now, don't think that deregulation drops the price in real estate because it doesn't work like that. It actually promotes... Uh, the competitiveness of the marketplace and and the way that it reflects in the real estate industry is by home prices going up so i hope that makes sense i don't want to over confuse it but basically the economic update and the first couple of pages mr sam ali does a great job talking about all of these things um and giving it also a little bit of the political aspect of it but uh uh, we like to connect all of that to, to where we are in the real estate cycle. Um.